In section 2.7, we look at the algebra of functions. And we begin with the arithmetic operations on functions. Basically, we're going to talk about how we can add, subtract, multiply, or divide two functions. So if we're given two functions, f and g, for each x in the domain of both f and g, the sum, difference, product, and quotients of f and g are defined as follows. So the function f plus g of x is found by adding f of x and g of x. The function f minus g of x is found by subtracting f of x and g of x. fg of x is found by multiplying f of x times g of x. And f over g of x is found by dividing f of x and g of x. And when dividing two functions, we need to, of course, restrict the denominator from being equal to zero. Let's take a look at a simple example. So in our first example here, we have the function f of x, which is defined to be 2 over x minus 4, and g of x is defined to be 3x minus 1. And we want to find the following functions and determine the domain of each. So first, let's talk about the domain of f of x and the domain of g of x. So f of x is the function 2 divided by x minus 4. And the domain for this one is pretty simple. We cannot plug in the number 4 because 4 minus 4 is 0, and that would make us divide by 0. So the domain is going to be all numbers except for 4. So that means the domain is all numbers from negative infinity up to 4, union all the numbers from 4 to infinity. The other function, g of x, has no restrictions because g of x is equal to 3x minus 1, and its domain is all real numbers. Now, when we're taking combinations of f of x and g of x, we need to take values of x that belong to both domains. So what that means for us is no matter what happens with these functions, we cannot plug in the number 4 because we cannot plug in the number 4 into the function f of x. Okay, let's go ahead and start finding each of the following. So in the first part, we are looking for f plus g of x. The definition for this is f of x plus g of x f of x is the function 2 over x minus 4, plus g of x is the function 3x minus 1. So that is the function f of x plus g of x, but this can be simplified. So what we can do here is we can remember that 3x minus 1 is over 1, and this allows us to multiply the numerator and denominator by x minus 4, to get a common denominator. So if we do that, we're going to have 2 over x minus 4 plus, and then here, if I multiply out the numerators here, we end up getting 3x squared minus 13x plus 4 over 1 times x minus 4 is x minus 4. And if we go ahead and add the numerators together, we end up getting 3x squared minus 13x plus 4 plus 2, which is 3x squared minus 13x plus 6 over x minus 4. So this is the function f plus g. Now its domain, which I'll put above here, is all numbers except for 4. And we can see that for two reasons. Number one, you can see that you cannot plug in 4 here. But also remember, no matter what happens, since the domain of f does not include the number 4, none of these functions can have a domain that includes 4 either. 
Now let's do the subtraction function. So here we are looking for f minus g of x, and this is defined to be f of x minus g of x, which is 2 over x minus 4 minus 3x minus 1. Once again, I'll get a common denominator here by multiplying the top and bottom by x minus 4. And when we do that, we end up getting 2 over x minus 4 minus... Now, notice that when you multiply these, it's the same as what we did here. So basically, we have this same expression, 3x squared minus 13x plus 4 over x minus 4. But when you subtract these, you have to distribute this negative to each of the terms here. So when we do that, we get negative 3x squared, positive 13x, and then we get negative 4, and then don't forget we're adding 2 to that. So it's going to be negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2, over the common denominator. So this is the simplified version of the difference function, f minus g of x. And once again, its domain is all numbers except the number 4. Okay, let's talk about the next function, which is this one here. So here we are doing fg of x. The definition for this is f of x times g of x. f of x is 2 over x minus 4, and we are multiplying that by g of x, which is 3x minus 1. And for this one, I don't need a common denominator because when you multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. So for this numerator here, we have 2 times 3x and 2 times negative 1. This is 6x minus 2. And in the bottom, we have x minus 4 times 1, which is x minus 4. Its domain, once again, is all numbers except for the number 4. And finally now, let's take a look at f divided by g. f divided by g of x is defined to be f of x divided by g of x. f of x is the function 2 over x minus 4, and we are dividing that by g of x, which is 3x minus 1. Now remember, the way you do this is you take the top function 2 over x minus 4 and dividing by 3x minus 1 is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of 3x minus 1. And when you do the multiplication here, 2 times 1 is 2. And in the bottom we have x minus 4 times 3x minus 1. You can leave it like this. This is perfectly fine. The domain here is we know x cannot be equal to 4 because that will give us division by 0, but also x cannot be equal to 1 third because if you set 3x minus 1 equal to 0 and you solve for x, you get x is equal to 1 third. So we can't plug in 1 third here, otherwise this will become 0 and then we will be dividing by 0. So this domain has two restrictions. Oops, this one here. So x cannot be equal to 4, and also x cannot be equal to 1 third. So an interval notation that is negative infinity up to 1 third, union 1 third up to 4, union 4 to infinity. In our next example, we have two functions, f and g, defined as you see here. And what we want to do for this one is we want to evaluate f plus g of negative 1, f divided by g of 3, and f times g of 3. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. And I want to show you both methods. 
So to find f plus g of 1, one way to do it is to first find f plus g of x. And f plus g of x is f of x plus g of x. And this is 2x squared minus x plus the square root of x plus 1. And I want you to notice that you really can't combine anything here. These are not like terms. So if that's f plus g of x, to find f plus g of negative 1, all I need to do is take negative 1 and put it in for x, which means I'm going to put it in for x here and here and here. And so that's going to give us 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1 plus the square root of negative 1 plus 1. And this is 2 times negative 1 squared is positive 1. Minus minus 1 is plus 1. And then we have this plus the square root of 0. And so this is 2 plus 1 plus 0, which is 3. So this is one method for finding a function value like this. But we could have also done it a slightly different way. And I just want to show you this for comparison. I'm not saying that it's better or worse. So another way to find f plus g of negative 1 is just to use the definition of f plus g from the beginning. So f plus g of negative 1 is the same as f of negative 1 plus g of negative 1. And then all I need to do is figure out separately what is f of negative 1 and what is g of negative 1, and then we just add those two numbers together. So f of negative 1 is 2 times negative 1 squared minus negative 1, and this is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And g of negative 1 is the square root of negative 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 0, which is 0. And now we just take these two values and add them together, 3 plus 0, which is 3. And it's essentially the same thing in each of these problems, but two different ways to approach it. Now let's take a look at the second part. We want to find f divided by g of 3. So to do this, we are going to first write down what we're doing here, f divided by g of 3. And let's first go ahead and find f divided by g of x. Definition for doing this is f of x divided by g of x. f of x is 2x squared minus x. g of x is the square root of x plus 1. And now from there, to find f divided by g of 3, I'm just going to plug 3 into this function. And so that gives us 2 times 3 squared minus 3 divided by the square root of 3 plus 1. This is 2 times 9 minus 3 divided by the square root of 4. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 3 is 15. And the square root of 4 is 2. And so we get 15 over 2. And finally, to find f times g of 3, I'll first find f times g of x. Definition for doing this is f of x times g of x, which means we're going to take the function 2x squared minus x, and we're going to multiply that by the square root of x plus 1. And again, there's nothing really that we can do here to simplify this. So we'll leave it in that form. And now to find f times g of 3, I'm simply going to plug 3 into this function here. So that gives us 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times the square root of 3 plus 1. This is 2 times 9 minus 3 multiplied by the square root of 4. And this is 15 times 2, which is 30. Now let's talk about an application. Here we want to calculate profit. 
says the Global X Corporation has revenues modeled by the function R of T equals 40 plus 2T, where T is the number of years since 2010, and R of T is in millions of dollars. So revenue is the amount of money brought in. Its operating costs are modeled by the function C of T is 35 plus 1.6 times T, where T is the number of years since 2010. And C of T is also in millions of dollars. Find the profit function, P of T. Okay, so a couple of things here. R of T is the revenue. Revenue means money brought in. So if you have a, bu a business and you're selling something, revenue is the total amount of money that you collect. But this is not your profit because when you run a business, you also have costs. So C of T is the cost function. And this is the money paid out. So your cost function is going to be paying your employees. It's going to be buying materials to produce something. It's going to be all the things that you have to pay for to run your business. So the profit function is relatively simple. It's the money that you bring in minus the money that you pay out. So profit is revenue minus cost. So in this particular example, the profit is going to be your revenue function, which is 40 plus 2T, minus your cost function, which is 35 plus 1.6 times T. And so if you combine like terms here, you have 40 plus 2T minus 35 minus 1.6T. Combining like terms, 40 take away 35 is 5. And then 2T take away 1.6T is positive 0.4T. So the profit function P of T is 5 plus 0.4 T. And again, this is in millions of dollars. Now, they don't ask anything else in this question, but let me just give you a brief application of this. Suppose they ask you to find the profit in the year 2016. So we have to remember what they told us is that T is the number of years since 2010. So in 2016, T is going to be 6. So the profit for that year is going to be P of 6, which is 5 plus 0 0.4 times 6. And this is 5 plus 0 0.4 times 6 is 2.4. And that is 7.4. And then you have to remember that this is in millions of dollars. So in 2016, the profit is equal to 7.4 million dollars. Now we look at compositions of functions. The composition of functions f and g is the function denoted by this notation. Okay, so you notice this little circle there. And its definition is the composition of f and g is f of g of x. Now, what's important to note here is that this is not multiplication. This is plugging one function inside of another function. And the domain of a composition is the set of all x's in the domain of the inside function, such that g of x is in the domain of the outside function. And don't worry too much about domains. I'll talk a little bit about that. But let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So here we have the function f of s is equal to s squared plus 1. And g of s is negative 2s. In the first part of this problem, we want to find an expression for f of g of s. 
and also give its domain. The definition for the composition of f and g is that we are going to do f of g of s. So we are quite literally plugging the g of s function into the f function. There's a couple of different ways to go about doing this. What I like to do is just go ahead and say, well, what is g of s? We know g of s is negative 2s. So when we say to do f of g of s, we are doing f of negative 2s. So now we just have to compute what is f of negative 2s. Well, the f function tells us to do s squared plus 1. So f of anything is to square that thing and then add 1. So f of negative 2s is going to be negative 2s quantity squared plus 1. And now we just need to do the math on this. Negative 2s quantity squared is positive 4s squared plus 1. This is f of g of s. Now, what is its domain? Well, first we have to say, what is the domain of the inside function? Now, the inside function, when I, when I use that terminology, when you have the composition f of g, we know that what it means is that you're plugging g into f, right? So the inside function is g. What's the domain of that function? Well, its domain is all real numbers because there's no restriction when you take negative 2 and you multiply it by a number. So there's no restrictions on the inside function. So then the only question is, in the end, when we got our result here, is there any restriction here? And the answer is no. There's no restriction here either because you're not taking the square root. You're not dividing by anything. So there's nothing bad that can happen with any value of s that's plugged in. So the domain for this is all real numbers. Let's take a look at the next one. The next part of this problem is that we're going to find g of f of s. So we're doing it the other way around. g of f of s is defined to be plugging f into g. Well, f is this function. So when we say g of f, we are doing g of s squared plus 1. And now how do you do g of s squared plus 1? Well, the g function tells us that g of anything is negative 2 times that thing. So g of s squared plus 1 is simply going to be negative 2 times s squared plus 1. And if you do the math on this, multiply it out, we get negative 2s squared minus 2. So the function g of f of s is negative 2s squared minus 2. Now, its domain is also all real numbers, and that's because there are no restrictions on the inside function f in this case. And there also are no restrictions on the function that you get in the end. Another thing I want to point out here is that I want you to notice that f of g and g of f are equal to different functions. So the order that you do the composition really matters. You don't get the same thing when you do it two different ways. Now let's go ahead and answer part C and part D. So for part C, they ask us to evaluate f of g of negative 1. And this is pretty easy now because we know that f of g of s is 4s squared plus 1. So f of g of negative 1 is going to amount to plugging negative 1 into this function. And so we get 4 times negative 1 squared plus 1. And this is 4 times 1 plus 1, and this is equal to 5. And then for part D, they ask us to calculate g of f 
of negative 1. And to do this one, we're going to plug negative 1 into this function. And when we do that, we get negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 2. And this is negative 2 times 1 minus 2, which is negative 2 minus 2, which equals negative 4. Another example, here we have a function f of x is 1 over x, and g of x is x squared minus 1. And we want to find f of g and its domain. And then we want to find g of f and its domain. So we'll start with f of g of x. Definition is that we are going to plug g of x into f of x. That means we're going to plug the function x squared minus 1 into f of x, right? Because g of x is x squared minus 1. Now, what is f of something? Well, it tells us right here, f of something is 1 over that thing. So f of x squared minus 1 is 1 over x squared minus 1. So we have f of g of x is 1 over x squared minus 1. Now, what is the domain of that function? Well, to answer that question, we first have to look at the domain of the inside function. The inside function is g of x, which is x squared minus 1. That domain is all real numbers. Then you have to look at the final product. What did you end up with in the end here? Well, we ended up with 1 over x squared minus 1. Does this have any restrictions? Well, yes, it does, right? Because 1 over x squared minus 1, if you write this in factored form, x squared minus 1 is x minus 1 times x plus 1. And you can see very clearly that x cannot be equal to 1, and x can also not be equal to negative 1, because those numbers will make one of these factors 0, which will make the whole denominator 0, and we cannot divide by 0. So the domain for this composition function is everything except x cannot be 1 or negative 1. Now, remember, on a number line, what that means, here you have negative 1 and positive 1. x cannot be this number and x cannot be this number. But x can be anything other than those two numbers. And so this first interval here, those are all the numbers from negative infinity to negative 1. This next interval is going to be all the numbers from negative 1 to positive 1. And this final interval is all the numbers from 1 to infinity. And so that is the domain of that particular composition. For the second part, we're doing the same thing, just the other way around. We want to do g of f of x, which means to plug f of x into g of x. And that means we are going to plug 1 over x into g of x, right? Because f of x up here is equal to 1 over x. Now, how do we do that? Well g of x is x squared minus 1. So whatever you're plugging into g, you have to square it and then subtract 1. So if I'm plugging 1 over x into g, I have to square 1 over x and subtract 1. And if I simplify that, I can write that as g of f of x is 1 over x squared minus 1. Now, how did I get that? Well, I, I squared 1, which is 1, and then I also squared the x, which is x squared, right? What is its domain? Well, first we have to consider what is the domain of the inside function. The inside function is f of x, and you can see very clearly for f of x, x cannot be equal to 0. So its domain is everything except 0. Then you also have to look at the final result here. 
are there any other restrictions besides x cannot be 0? And the answer is no. x equals 0 is the only restriction here. So our domain is going to be x cannot be 0. And the way we write that, of course, is in interval notation. For the next example, we're going to do things a little bit backwards here. We are given a function h of x is equal to the square root of 3x squared minus 1. And we want to find two functions f and g such that h of x will be equal to the composition of f and g. So in other words, we need to find two functions f and g such that when you plug g of x into f of x, you get this function. And there's really only one obvious choice to make here, and that is you want g of x here to be the inside part of this composition, and you want the f of x to be the outside part of the composition. And so if we do that, g of x would be the function 3x squared minus 1, and f of x would simply be the square root of x. Now, once you come up with two hypothesized functions, you can check it to make sure it works. So if these are my functions f of x and g of x, what would f of g of x be equal to? Well, remember, it's f of g of x, and that means we're going to do f of 3x squared minus 1, right? Because that's what g of x is. And f of anything means to take the square root of that thing. And so this will be the square root of 3x squared minus 1. So yes, this choice for f of x and g of x works. In other words, when I do the composition here, I'm getting this function that we talked about in the beginning. So this is a little bit more of a creative example where you have to come up with a couple of different functions to make this thing work. And by the way, the, these choices for f and g are not unique. I, I could pick another one. Actually, maybe, maybe I'll show you that. So another possible solution for this problem would be the following. So let me write this down and see if it makes sense. What if I had chosen f of x to be the square root of x minus 1, and then I just choose g of x to be 3x squared? Right? Different choices. Do you see how if I do f of g of x, this is going to be f of 3x squared, right? Because g of x is 3x squared. Well, f of 3x squared, if I look at my f function, means I need to plug 3x squared in for x right here. And if I do that, I get the square root of 3x squared minus 1. So notice that in the end, we get the same thing. So there are actually many, many different choices for f of x and g of x. You can get very creative with this process. Now we're going to look at a composite function application. Here it says the cost of fuel for running a fleet of vehicles owned by Global X Corporation is given by c of x is 2.5 times x where x is the total number of gallons of fuel used. The Canadian branch, however, records its fuel consumption in liters. The conversion from liters to gallons is given by the function g of x is equal to 0.25x, where x is the number of liters. So for part A, what they want us to do here is they want us to find the composition c of g of x. And that means they want us to do c of g of x. Well, they tell us that g of x is 0.26x. So c of g of x is c of 0.26x. How do you do c of that? Well, up here it says c of anything is 2.5 times that thing. And so this is going to be 2.5 times 0.26x. 
So now we just have to multiply those quantities. So what is 2.5 times 0.26x? Well, what you get here is 0.65x. Okay, so that is the composition C of G of X. Now, what is that? What does that mean, right? Because it says for the second part, interpret the result here. So let's think about what we did here. So the inside function, g of x, is the conversion from liters to gallons. Okay? So if we have a certain number of liters x, if you multiply that by 0.26, that gives you the number of gallons. So g stands for the number of gallons. So when we do C of G of X, we're doing the cost of the number of gallons, okay? But we're doing it where X is given in liters. So basically in the end here, we have the cost is 0.65 multiplied by the number of liters. Okay, so for part B... They ask us to find the cost of 120 liters of fuel. So all I got to do for this is just plug 120 into this function that we just found. So it's going to be 0.65 times 120. And if we do the math on that, we get 78. So it's going to be $78. All right, and the last thing we're going to talk about here once again is the difference quotient. So combining functions is a technique that we often use in calculus. For example, it's used in finding the difference quotient. And remember, the difference quotient is this expression here. So let me go ahead and write that down below here. We have f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So what I want to point out here is that when you are doing f of x plus h, you are plugging the function x plus h into the function f of x, right? So this is a composition of sorts. Now, we did this in the previous section, and we didn't mention the word composition, but that's essentially what we were doing when we did that. So here's an example. We want to compute the difference quotient for this particular function. So to do this example, we need to figure out what is f of x plus h. Then we have to subtract f of x from that, and then finally divide by h. So let's go ahead and figure out what is f of x plus h. Well, right here it says f of x is 2x squared plus 1. So f of x plus h means that we are going to replace the x here with x plus h. And when we do that, we get 2 times x plus h squared plus 1. Now, if you do the math on this, this is 2 times x plus h times x plus h plus 1. And that is 2 times the quantity x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 1. And if I multiply that out, we get 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared plus 1. So that is f of x. Excuse me, that is f of x plus h. So when I go to figure out my difference quotient right here, first I'm going to plug f of x plus h into this slot. So this thing here is what this is equal to. So let's go ahead and put that in. We have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 1. And then we have to subtract f of x. And f of x is 2x squared plus 1. And then that whole thing gets divided by h. So now let's just go ahead and do the math here. We have 2x squared 
plus 4xh plus 2h squared minus 1 minus 2x squared. Um, excuse me, this is plus 1 right here. I made a mistake. That's plus 1. And then minus 2x squared and then minus 1. And then all divided by h. Okay? And then notice that 2x squared and negative 2x squared cancel. Positive 1 and negative 1 cancel. And we end up with 4xh plus 2h squared divided by h. And if we factor out the h in the numerator, we get h times 4x plus 2h divided by h. And then that allows us to cancel these h's here. And we end up with 4x plus 2h. And that is the difference quotient, which, again, we talked about this in the previous section. But the reason we bring it up again is because this process right here, this f of x plus h, this is a composition. Right? It's a composition of the function f and the function x plus h.